I think most people sitting in the audience probably know that NIU is embarking on the program prioritization process. I've spoken about this to a number of groups. President Baker put it in a Baker report, and Kelly Bauer did an outstanding article that's front page and above the fold in today's Northern Star. But even knowing that, I think a lot of people don't know what it really means. What is program prioritization, and why are we doing it? And I want to thank Vice Provost Berbrick for recognizing that it's about effectiveness and efficiency and partnerships and synergy, and it is not just a budget cutting exercise. Program prioritization is something that universities should do in flush times and in lean times, because it reminds us on a regular basis to ask the questions President Baker was alluding to when he talked about process redesign. What should we be doing? What should we be starting? What should we be stopping? What should we just keep on doing like we are doing it now? And we want to answer those questions in a prioritization process using data, using data to align our strategic plan and our strategic goals with our budget and expenditures, to enhance efficiency and the efficacy of all of our programs, academic and non-academic programs, and to strengthen NIU in the process. And we're not alone in embarking on program prioritization. Recently, there was a survey of over 100 universities. The sample had public universities and private universities, four-year and two-year research and comprehensive. And about half of those schools were already involved in program prioritization, and another quarter were starting. This doesn't mean that we're behind the eight ball. What it means is that there's a lot of experience out there that we can draw upon. So as we create a program prioritization that's right for NIU, we can learn from the experience of others. There are a number of basic elements to program prioritization. You need guiding principles, sort of you know, boundary limits or uh, ground rules for what you're going to do, what's on the table, what's not on the table. You need an inventory of programs. You have to know how many programs you have and what their names are so you can do the program prioritization. And you need criteria for evaluating the programs. You need to have templates and formats so that the programs that are making their cases, that are advocating for their futures, have an easy way of telling their story, both quantitatively and qualitatively. You need review panels or task forces that will look at all the data that comes in and help to rank or prioritize the program. And you need a system for doing that, and then you need processes for connecting those findings to action steps. These aren't things that are already in place here or at most universities, and these aren't things that you can do overnight by flipping a switch. The experience of other universities has shown us it takes at least a year to really roll out a program prioritization process. So where are we on the timeline? Last fall, we started to talk about and explore program prioritization as an option for NIU. We developed a coordinating team, and I'm going to talk about that a little more in a few slides. And we started letting the campus know we were going down this road. This spring, we've established guiding principles. We will be developing criteria for program evaluation with broad impact from the people in this audience and others across our university community. And we will be asking people to nominate folks for those task forces, for the panels that will be doing the program prioritization. Next fall, the programs will be receiving data so that they can analyze it and tell their stories. And then the task force reviews will be begin. And the task forces, one for academic programs, one for administrative programs, will prioritize or categorize the programs into five groups. And what are those five groups going to be named? I don't know at this point, but I know what the possible outcomes will be. Programs will have the opportunity to be enriched, to stay the same, to be reconfigured, to create more synergy, or to be diminished. In spring 16, we will start to take the budget for fiscal year 17 and use the results of the program prioritization to inform our resource allocation. So program prioritization will not be affecting any budget until fiscal 17. If we get a surprise from the state, as the president indicated, we would be not shocked to see a budget cut next year. We won't be accelerating program prioritization. This is a different type of process. 
So I talked about having a coordinating team. This past fall, there was a conference in Chicago where some of the leaders in higher education who have a great understanding of program prioritization were in attendance. There were 20 schools at that conference, none from Illinois, no Illinois publics, but one of our sister institutions, a Mac institution, Western Michigan, was there. And we took 11 people to this conference. It was close to us, it was easy. And we wanted to make sure that we took a team not only that had perspectives from across campus and key roles in our shared governance process, but also that we took the folks who really had the expertise to facilitate the building and implementation of the process for program prioritization at NIU. Many of those folks were in the audience for the last town hall. I know that some of them are here. As I say your name, if you're in the audience, please stand up so folks know who you are now and for the rest of the time that we're doing program prioritization. We took Jeff Reynolds, who's a data analyst from the office of the provost. Ibrahim Abdelmodalib, an engineering professor. I know he's not here because he's in Saudi Arabia. He's the chair of our resource space and budget committee, our shared governance committee that helps the president, provost, and CFO make budget decisions. Sue Minnie from the provost's office, vice provost for resource and planning, a key person in terms of allocation of human resources, space, and financial resources in the academic units. Those three individuals are making up the data subcommittee of our team and they'll be working in a way that will become apparent as we go through the presentation. Bill Pitney, faculty senate president and executive secretary of the University Council came. He represents shared governance across all of the NIU communities. Brett Coriel, our chief information officer, he represented cabinet level divisions, but we also know that information technology will be important in communications and data presentation. Mark Falkoff, a professor from the College of Law, who's been the chair of the Academic Planning Council of Faculty Senate, the shared governance committee that does program review and thinks about how programs can grow and increase their enrollment and their impact. That group is really be, being tasked with being the subcommittee for implementation. They're creating the survey that will be used to ask the campus community about criteria, and then they will go ahead and build after that the nomination process for task force members. Denise Schembechler, the Dean of the College of Business, who's a longtime Husky, great leadership perspective and also a marketing background was part of our team. Andy Small, former Chair of Operating Staff Council and who's still playing a statewide role with the State University Civil Service System. Kelly Westner Michael, Associate Vice President in Student Affairs and Dean of Students who brings an important lens about programs that happen that aren't administrative, aren't academic and have a high impact on students. Denise and Andy and Kelly are our marketing subgroup. Carolyn De Douglas, the Vice President for Academic Programs, is serving sort of as the overall facilitator for the process, and of course, I'm trying to help in every way that I possibly can. I really want to emphasize that this is a coordinating team. They will be playing a facilitatory role. As a team, they will not be making decisions. They will be taking information in and out, making sure that the campus is well informed. Our communication sub team is already working with marketing and communications and IT and the provost staff and others on campus. We have a website that will be going live next week. On that website, we'll have this presentation. We'll have frequently asked questions. We'll have a box where you can anonymously make comments or ask questions. Our data support team is working with the people on our campus who are the stewards of data, institutional research, registration and records, academic analysis and reporting, sponsored projects, and also with the folks who understand what the programs will need, what format they might want it in, what are the particular needs of one program or another, to build the data platforms, to make sure that we have a process for supporting folks as they analyze the data and turn in their narratives. So what are the ground rules? What are our guiding principles? Well, first, our first guiding principle is that there are no sacred cows. All programs will be subject to program prioritization. And no decisions are being made in advance, and no decisions are being made based on anything other than data. So those are our overall guiding principles. I also want to say that programs that might be diminished as a result of this process, we diminish programs now. 
And when we do that, we honor the contracts of all our employees. We guarantee that students who are in academic programs that may be discontinued are taught out. They can finish their degrees. We'll continue to do that. What really is a program? And we use that word in a lot of different contexts. In program prioritization, the word program has a very particular meaning. It's an activity or a collection of activities that consumes resources. And these can be dollars, people, space, equipment, or time. A program is not a department. A department is not a program. Academic programs and administrative programs general, or academic departments and administrative departments or divisions generally contain multiple programs. If you think about an academic department, it may have a bachelor's program, a master's program, a PhD program, a cluster of general education courses. It may do some contract teaching. It may have a research institute. All of those would be programs within a department. If you think of an administrative program, I like to use the example of athletics to ensure everybody that athletics is not a sacred cow. There are lots of different sports. There are men's and women's teams. There are operations. There's compliance. There's advising. There's probably stuff I don't know about that goes on in athletics. All of those are individual programs. And then in the context of program prioritization, when we use the words academic and administrative, they also have very specific meanings. So academic programs are the ones I spoke to you about. They're generally instructional, degree, research-oriented programs. When we do program prioritization, there are things that we may think of often as academic, our library, advising, that for the purpose of this exercise are classified as administrative. That's a best practice that's evolved across many campuses because it provides those op programs all the best opportunity to make their case. So what are the criteria that we will use to evaluate programs? I don't know yet. It's a work in progress, and we need you to help with that. There was a book published in the mid-90s by Robert Dickinson called Prioritizing Academic Programs and Services. And these are the 10 criteria that he suggested campuses use. Some campuses have used these exactly as you see here. Most campuses haven't. They've adopted them to their culture. There are many things in these criteria that are attractive. The criteria are both quantitative and qualitative. They speak not just to cost and numbers, but to the history and the importance of the program to the institution over time. They provide an opportunity for programs to show, if you gave me more resources, look how much more I could do with them. And they provide obvious places for students and alumni to provide input into the program narrative. Not a bad starting point. But 10 criteria, that's a long list. Many campuses collapse them. And here's an alternative version. Here they've taken those 10 criteria and collapsed them into five. Importance to the university, external and internal demands are together. Quality is still there. There's still an opportunity analysis. Some campuses have used these criteria for both academic and administrative programs and ask slightly different questions under the major headings. Again, we don't know what our criteria will be looking like, but we'll be asking you, we'll be launching a survey and asking you to comment on the number of criteria, the nature of the criteria, how they should be weighted. There'll be a place to write in criteria, and we expect that survey to launch in February. What about the two task forces? One will look at academic programs. One will look at administrative programs. They'll be doing the actual prioritization. The academic task force will be all faculty, and there'll be representatives from all seven colleges. But I want to make an important point. There'll be representatives from seven colleges for collective wisdom, not because each of those faculty members is going to be arguing and protecting the programs in their college or their department or that they teach in. We're really looking for people who have a more institutional view. The same will be true on the administrative side. We want faculty and staff from all 10 divisions. But just as on the academic side, we want folks with what we're calling a trusty mentality, folks who've been here long enough to have a long-term perspective and who can put NIU and the institution as its long-term sustainability ahead of their short-term um, self-interest. 
We also want people who are servant leaders, people who when they've been asked to serve on things that are time consuming and hard before have shown up and done the work. That's why we're gonna ask people to nominate their peers for this task force. We'll be launching a form and a submission process in March. We don't wanna launch it before the criteria are determined. And um, these will be selected by the president, provost, CFO, and the executive secretary of the university council. When I looked at that bullet, I just remembered, I didn't say what's gonna happen with the survey data for the criteria, so let me take a minute and tell you that now. They'll be fed back to a joint task force of the Resource, Space, and Budget Committee and the Academic Planning Council. That group will be supplemented with others so that we have a little bit broader perspective. We expect to invite students to serve on that task force. That task force will be defining the final set of criteria or that group. So let me end with a call to action. What should you be doing now? What should you be thinking about as we move forward in program prioritization? Definitely participate in the survey that we're gonna launch next month. That's your opportunity to say, these are the criteria that I think fit NIU's culture. Think about who you might wanna nominate for a task force. Anyone can make a nomination. We'll wanna pick the best people from our faculty and staff to serve on those task forces. And then start thinking about your own programs. What are the things that you wanna put forward? Are there new programs that your division has been dying to launch, but resource constraints have not allowed that? Are there programs that can be reconfigured, combined, greater collaborations or partnerships done for process re-engineering and greater efficiency? Do you wanna start doing that now in preparation? And are there programs that are on your books that haven't really been viable for a long time, but you just have kind of had inertia and never taken them off. Do you want to wait for program prioritization or do you want to start moving those resources elsewhere on your own? These are the things that you can be doing now. <laughs>